Nebraska and Texas were a big cattle state, and a lot of ranchers, a lot of cowboys. Uh, it's just part of the tradition of uh, Texas. Uh, out here in West Texas, we've got some good cattle raisers, and, and uh, people get real serious about their, their beef and getting their barbecue on here. So uh, anytime you take a cut of meat and flavor it with wood, uh, people, uh, you ask 10 different people about that, their opinions on it, and you'll get 10 different answers. Barbecue, you know, it's going back to the old days of taking a cheap piece of meat, which is no longer cheap these days, and cooking it for a long time to get the tenderness and flavor. I think it's just kind of using, you know, a lesser quality of meat to make a really good meal. Of course, there's got to be smoke and, you know, flavor on it. Uh, the wood, to me, is 100% is of the, uh, the process. Uh, I mean, if you don't start with a good product, you're not going to finish with a good product. So. Here we use hickory, strictly hickory wood. I think in Texas, if you're going to bill yourself as an authentic barbecue joint, a live fire is, is hard to get around. There's such a depth of flavor that's developed through the compounds and the smoke and, and fire itself that develop the, that flavor profile that you can't replicate through uh, electric or gas. Uh, there are hybrid smokers. Um, that operate on both gas and wood. So you basically use wood when it's convenient and, and then you can walk away and, and let it run off of a thermostat and gas uh, to finish the cook. So uh, I, I would say that that's better than, than no wood at all. But I, in, in my opinion, all wood is, is the only way to really develop those, those flavor profiles. I could be with anyone Just while the honeymoon burns bright No electricity that keeps things light And I'm not saying that it's right Or saying that it's always right I'm just saying that it's not a lie I don't, I don't think that you I ever get used to, to the late nights and the or early mornings or the all-nighters. It's a lifestyle owning this sort of food establishment. It's not just a job. So you have to really um, adjust your life, go to bed earlier, rest on your days off, because um, it's not just something that you can leave work at work. It's it, This is our, our work, it's our life. When I took this over in 1980, my goal was to leave it exactly like it was because it was successful and it, it's, I mean, I, it's worked ever since, so I'm kind of old school. If it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> it's fun because anybody can get out in their backyard and try it. You know, you may not be great at it, but, you know, have friends and family over kind of gathering and, you know, it's kind of a social event. I know that the more I, I cooked, the, the more of a feel I got for what I was doing. Uh, for the most part, barbecue is a mystery until you take a bite. You could put in 18 hours and everything could look good and you go to take a bite and it was off. The seasoning was off or the smoke was off or it was overcooked or undercooked at that point. The more you do it, the, the more you're around it, the more you smell it, the more you see it, the more you feel it, the more confident you are. If I know that this piece of meat should have come off at seven, but today it's just not ready at that point, then I'm confident leaving it on to finish. And likewise, if, uh, if I feel like it should have come off at seven, but at 5.30 it, it feels and looks and, and acts like it's cooked through, uh, then, then I have to be confident enough to pull it at that point. Tom and Bingo's in this location opened November 1952. I'm second generation in it. I would say 70% of my customers that come in here know what they're gonna order before they ever get up to the counter. I mean, we try to be real consistent each day with what we do. Uh, we don't change anything, so we offer the same products, and, and uh, I think they just, uh, they know, they, they expect that they're gonna get what they get when they order, so, uh, yeah.
different woods do different things to different cuts of meat. Uh, like, for instance, if I'm gonna grill a steak, I like a good mesquite coat. Oak in itself is very, very mild. Um, so if I'm doing a 16 to 19 hour cook, I don't have to worry about overdoing it, getting it too smoky. You can over smoke it and then you kind of get a bitterness and you get heartburn and a lot of that stuff. And so getting the right amount of smoke on it to hit the general public, some people like it really smoky, some people don't like much smoke at all. Oak is kind of a safe alternative, very mild and allows for a really long cook. But if I'm doing a bulk piece of meat, like a brisket or a prime rib or a pork butt, uh, hickory to me is just, it's a hotter burning wood, uh, puts a great flavor into the meat that you're cooking. So to me, it's the Cadillac. So you talk about the barbecue renaissance and, and the fan following and people going out of their way. I mean, they, they've got places now that they reference as destination barbecue, where uh, people set out on a weekend barbecue crawl across Texas to hit 12 places in 10 meals. And it's, I, I can't explain what it is other than you're either in, in that groove and, and providing something that you can't get anywhere else, or you're not. You know, I think, I think some of it has to do with sort of a primal sense, just the meat and the fire, and it's nothing fancy, and there's not this fancy kitchen with, you know, the thermostat that you set it, and you go home and sleep and come back, and you have this delicious brisket. There's uh, something about the fire and the wood and the maintenance of that, and knowing what the people that prepared it have sacrificed and gone through, which sounds so dramatic, but it's true. It's, I think it's an art and I think that it's um, something special and people that do it really good attract people from other places because you can only have barbecue like that, I think a handful of places in the world.